Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today for the second webinar uh, of this admission season. Um, thank you to my colleagues who were also able to uh, be on time and join. First things first, I would like to ask everyone to please keep your microphones muted for the duration of the webinar unless you are um, invited to speak. Thank you. You don't have to turn your camera on. You can, but unfortunately, I won't really be able to see you because um, I'm focusing on the presentation. So sorry about that. Uh, if you have any questions, which I really, really hope you have and even encourage it, you can submit them in the chat um, and then we'll focus on them towards the end of the webinar. Uh, to, just to make you uh, just to make it clear, this webinar is being recorded and uh, will be available on our website for those who couldn't um, join us today because of work or school or um, picking children up from uh, from school. So uh, it's it's going to be there for them and for you if you would need to go back to any particular section. I would like to welcome my colleagues. Um, firstly, we have the head of our study affairs office, Eva Kelnerova. Hello. And then um, two of our students, Yevgenia and Flavio. Um, in case you actually were at the virtual open day or saw the video that's on the website, you might have noticed them in it. So um, I would like to thank them again for uh, for being here today with us. They have slides and loads of information for you. So I'm glad that they will be able to share it. We are going to start with talking about financial support um, that will be covered by Eva. Then I will take uh, over from her and talk about research state opportunities that our students enjoy. I will talk about accommodation, show you the dormitory where our students live and um, then we will give the floor to the students and they will be able to show you um, their pictures and talk about managing finance, um, living in Prague and uh, student life pre-COVID and hopefully um, post-COVID as well. So not to delay it any further, I would like to ask Eva to, to start. Okay. so. Let's start with just repeating that at Sergi, yeah, you can study in the two in the two programs. So it's just the PhD in economics and the master's in economic research. In some ways, those programs basically, in some ways, they overlap. So, however, well, the first thing that you have to know, we do not charge any student any fee for application. There is no tuition in the PhD in economics as the program is Czech and American. The Czech part is just done by the Czech law, is free of charge. In the American part, the tuition is waived. And the same is for the master's in economic research. Also, the students do not pay anything for the higher education in the Czech Republic unless there is a private university or you are studying longer than the standard length of the studies. And in the case, if you do not finish the studies, then in your future studies, you are basically charged the fee from the university. Okay, now, how does it work at SARGI? We basically currently offer, let's say, we could call it a three track. The first is just the PhD where you have already gained your master's, master's degree. You can go directly into our PhD in economics. Unless if you know that you already, after your bachelor's degree, you want to do your PhD, then you simultaneously enroll into the PhD in economics, the US PhD track, plus the Czech Masters in Economic Research Program. So they, these are the first two tracks and that leads to the PhD degree. How does it look like with the financial support in these two programs? Well, they are similar. So the financial support is guaranteed in the first five years. Here, you need to apply separately for any financial support. The financial support is paid monthly in the Czech crowns. If you basically decided to live in the dormitories, live in the cafeterias, that just you will be able to cover reasonable expenses in the Prague. 
We also cover the health insurance and we contribute to you to the public support. One other thing is, before you just ask that, the certainty of support is designed only to support the person that's admitted to the PhD program. So it doesn't support any family member that you wanted to bring to the search EI. That's for, the, for our PhD track. For the master's, if there are students who just want to go to the master's in economic research, there is no stipend and you also do not pay any tuition. Sergi covers your health insurance and also the contribution to the public transport. Right, uh, thank you, Eva. I would just like to um, point out that uh, throughout this presentation, um, I, I spread these frequently asked questions from the students that they that were emailed to us or that were, uh, they were actually submitted with registration to the webinar. So um, here's the first one. And uh, to answer it, working and studying, I'm, I'm sure Flavio and Evgenia will be able to, to confirm this, but working and studying at SERGI simultaneously is quite a superpower. In the first two years, students are basically locked at school under a pile of papers and they really need to focus on studies. So they don't technically have time to have um, a job. We, do, we can't really help them get a job. Um, that's not really a service that we offer. Um, however, once they get into the research part of their studies, they often um, take on research assistantship, they work on projects with the faculty and with our um, external researchers, so they receive some money from grants. So this, this is possible, but um, having a full-time job, being a PhD student, definitely not in the first two years, unfortunately. Okay, so now let me just go over a little bit into more details what lies ahead. In the first three years, the stipend is typically range from 10,500 Czech crowns to the, to the highest amount, which is the 16,000 Czech crowns for the students with the outstanding results. So the 10,500 crowns is the students who are not fulfilling all the academic requirements, such as assistantship, or do not perform that well in with the G do not perform them well in their academic requirements. So from the third year to fourth year, the students have a higher as you progress. So you usually start with the 12,500 check crowns, which is similar to the 10,500 check crowns and to the 20,600 check crowns for outstanding students. So how, let's talk more about the stipend. So during the year one to four, Part of your stipend is covered by the Charles University. Whatever is ahead of, it's just partially covered from the CERGI. And as I said, it depends on your academic performance, on your study requirements, assistantship duties, and other, other activities at the CERGI. After the third year, in, after you had behind you your first presentation of your research, this is basically when the attestation committee evaluates your current work. And this is when your stipend usually goes to higher. The better you perform during the dissertation proposal workshop, the higher stipend you're usually receiving. And it's also, of course, it's look at the type of the assistantship, your GPA, if there is a publication coming, if you had a teaching assistantship and all that. This all is evaluated from the third year because this is where the research starts. As Veronica was mentioning before, the first two years, you're just going to be studying economics. The year number five, you are receiving a paid salary from the CERGI and you are receiving contract as the junior researcher. Again, the amount de depends on nature of your involvement in the institution research projects. We also offer a first year excellence fellowship. This is awarded by the admissions committee to the outstanding future researchers that should help them to focus on the study during their first year at the CERGI. This is paid you are receiving a 4,000 check crowns paid on the monthly basis together with the stipend for the one academic year. However, as everything at the CERN GI, your work gets 
um, evaluate it after each semester and decide after each semester if you're in the top and your performance is the way we were expecting from you and confirms it every semester. The good news is that the first year excellence fellowship can be prolonged into the second year on a specified condition where you passed all the general examinations, all the courses with good grades, and you still rank among the top three students of your study cohort based on the, based on the cumulative GPA after the first year. Basically, if you just put this together, let's say that you're among the top students, you're receiving your stipend 15,000 plus the four, it basically makes a nice monthly basis where you are receiving 19,000 Czech crowns. There is another possibility of you to, to have another type of the support, it's the teaching fellowship. Through that, if you go through our teaching fellowship program, and then you are picked up to teach abroad, and this is fully funded. So that's, and again, another extra towards to the stipends. You can become a part of the teaching fellowship group when you reach your years three plus. Okay, sorry, I was muted. Um, thank you, Eva, for, for explaining um, the intricacies of uh, financial support. Again, if there are any questions, uh, please ask in the chat. Um, Eva will be able to, to answer your questions. Now, let's move on to something that happens um, after the third year. So after two uh, long years um, in coursework, students start working on their research full time. And uh, as some of you might know, when you work on your research, sometimes you need a bit more help, some data that are not necessarily in the place where you study. So what you need or can do is that you can travel to a different university, um, make contacts with professors that have similar research interests and uh, or go to institutions that actually have the data set that you need for your particular research. This possibility um, is uh, quite uh, often used by our students because it's really well funded. So basically our students go abroad um, typically it's one to three months, but it, it can actually be longer if approved or it can be three months and then three months at, at another institution. So it is possible to go um, twice, three times, um, because maybe you need data from different places, you need help of different people. It de really depends on the research you're doing. Um, you need to or students need to um, consult with their dissertation chair and uh, also other professors or faculty members and researchers from SERGI because they need to find the contact at that um, target university or institution. Once they have the contact, they receive an invitation letter and then they can apply for funding. There is one rule that um, once they return from the from the mobility or from the research stay, they have to spend at least six months at SERGI. So in case they start really liking the other institution, they can't just stop um, stop studying at SERGI and, um, and, and staying uh, there. So they have to come back and actually work on their research and implement what they learned. The sources of financial support are both internal and external. Um, we as SERGI, we have a SERGI foundation that actually um, gives money, the mobility fund gives money. Um, there is a committee that has to review all the applications and then, uh, then decides if, they are, if the students are getting uh, funding, which usually uh, they do because we don't get 300 applications. We typically get five to eight per semester because not everyone wants to go. Uh, then there is possibility to ask for money from the Charles University Mobility Fund. Um, same thing, you apply and then a committee decides. There is a possibility to be a part of the GEM Climb um, founding, which is quite substantial and is very good, uh, especially for those who 
um, have research in environmental economics um, and those that want to study at US colleges uh, or universities or do research there because obviously then they need a bit more funding because it's more expensive. There are other possibilities and students are really encouraged to try and find funding for themselves. So sometimes they contact other foundations and other, other sponsors to be able to cover as much of their expenses uh, as needed to go um, abroad and research. I have uh, two um, of, uh, of our students mobilities reports or parts of their reports. So I'll give you time to read them. But just to introduce, um, this is what uh, one of our students uh, sent us. Her name is Ketavani. She was, I think last year she joined us for a virtual open day and she spent four months at MIT. Um, I think I'll give you two, two minutes to, to read the part of the report um, so that I don't skip to another. All right, I think two minutes were an overestimation. <laughs> I think I think um, everyone should have read that by now. So um, I'm just going to go to the second um, report or part of a report that the student sent us. Um, this is Rastio Rastislav. He was actually at uh, the virtual open day this year and he spoke about his research stay uh, there. So if you want to learn a bit more, you can always watch the section of the video that has Rastio talking about his um, experience. He went to Harvard for a semester and uh, I believe that he is applying to go somewhere else next year, hopefully, if COVID um, allows. So again, I'll give you 30 seconds to, to, to read what he has to say. Right. So as you can see, research stay or mobility, as, um, as the universities are calling it, are a great way to not only get data for your research, but also to maybe reach out and meet other researchers that might have the same ideas or actually fresh ideas. And uh, it, it is not uh, it is not unique that our students come back and they decide to change their research focus. So it's it's really a door opening to the world of research for the students, and it's a great um, a great thing to actually go through. Right, let's move on to accommodation. Our students, our Sergii students are typically staying in the Charles University dormitory called Hostjevas. Uh, if they are not located there, they can also be um, accommodated in other um, dormitories, but they would have to arrange that for themselves because we can only arrange uh, the Hostjevas dormitory. Uh, the dormitories and Hostivas included are generally located in the suburbs, so it's not the very center of the city, but I believe Hostivas is about 20, 15, 20 minutes uh, by train and the train station is five, seven minutes walk from Sergii. Um, I'm sure the students will 
uh, be able to give you better information on that, but uh, that's, that's what I've uh, gathered. Um, Hostivash offers double rooms that are en suite, which means that there is a bathroom shared between the two people in the room. The kitchen is shared on the one floor. I'm not sure how many rooms there are on each floor, but this is something that uh, Yevgenia or Flavio could um, answer. I know that there is no oven. Uh, you, can, you will also see it on the pictures. Um, so in case you want to bake something, uh, you'll need to um, ask maybe students from how cohorts who live in um, rented flats and they will be able to help you out. Um, this way uh, we helped uh, students bake things for our food party uh, two years ago. That was quite fun because they had no oven in the dormitory so they had to um, come to, to our, our place. Uh, the cost for uh, the room or for the bed in the room is approximately 3,000 crowns per month. Uh, for those of you who are not really sure how crowns, um, how much crowns are, um, 30, I think euro, one euro should be 28, 29 crowns um, and about 25 crowns are one dollar if I'm not mistaken but uh, I mean you can you can see that in in exchange uh, on exchange websites so uh, it's the the price is actually quite good now I've gathered some frequently asked questions actually and I think these are really good uh, because we get asked those a lot so can I get a single room well there are single rooms in Hostivas but there are so few of them that they tend to be fully booked. So it is possible for a student to book a room um, and then stay there for three years, for the three years of their bachelors. Um, so then they reapply each year and that's why a lot of the rooms are actually taken or most of the rooms are taken. So getting a single room in Hostivas is not impossible. We can, or students can try to apply, but it's not really, it's, it's not very likely to get it. There are other dormitories, uh, Charles University dormitories that have single rooms. Again, not many of them. Uh, Charles University is now uh, trying to, uh, there are reconstructions going on so that dormitories have more single rooms because it's quite the standard now at European universities. But um, at least you won't have to be sharing a bathroom uh, for, for the whole floor, one bathroom for a whole floor. So. I think that's that's quite um, it's quite nice. Next question: Can I live in the dorm with my family? Uh, Hostiva dormitory doesn't have any family rooms, but there is a family what we call family dormitory. So there, students can apply for a family room. But since Charles University has seventeen faculties uh, and Sergii, again, it's not exactly very likely that they will get it. So um, unfortunately, there's not much we can do to help uh, students who wish to bring their families along, but they can, they can definitely try and apply. Uh, next question, can you help me find an apartment in Prague? Uh, much like uh, not helping students find a job, we do not have the service um, to find uh, apartments. Um, so the best thing you can do or students can do is ask students who are older, who are in higher cohorts and live in rented places, how exactly they got the place, um, where they could um, find, any, find any contacts. Because unfortunately we as study affairs office cannot um, offer any assistance with private accommodation. There are uh, private dormitories in Prague. I believe that another one was, has been just finished and not very far from the city center. I don't really know the prices. Um, they definitely won't be 3000 per bed for month. But if you wish to have a small studio and still have this dormitory feeling, um, you can definitely go on Google and search for them there are quite a few, so um, that's, that's another opportunity. 
Another question is how much is rent in Prague, which is a very loaded question because it really depends on the location and on the type of accommodation you're uh, searching for. You can get a tiny, tiny, tiny place in the city center for 11,000 crowns per month, but you can also find um, a three room flat in the suburb for the same price. So again it takes um, searching and uh, the only advice that we can get is make sure that um, if you if, if there is a real estate company that they are registered and that they are not trying to scam you um, so that's that's really about um, that's that here are a few a few pictures of the dormitory. Um, it's not exactly super new, but it has been refurbished to a degree. Um, Hostivat is a really nice part of Prague that has, um, there is a, as you can see here, there's a swimming pool area. There is a lake or I'm not really sure if it's a lake technically uh, or a dam or something um, but people go uh, swim there in the summer it's really beautiful there's a huge park um, I think it's it's uh, it's an area that's uh, um, it's like you can't litter there it's very uh, oh, I forgot a word but that's fine um, but it's, it's a really beautiful park um, it's great for walks and for jogging as well here you can see the tiny kitchen. It's uh, it's very, very simple, but of course it depends how much you cook and uh, how much you have time for cooking as well. But um, I mean, there is everything that uh, students need as far as I know. Um, here are pictures of some of the rooms. Uh, I think there will be one more picture and then Yevgenia will have a picture, picture of a room as well. Uh, there's the common area downstairs. There is a cafeteria as well, if I'm not mistaken. And Charles University actually has more cafeterias spread around Prague where students can go and eat for really reasonable prices. So um, unless it's a COVID uh, situation, um, the, the cafeteria, cafeterias are actually quite, quite good. Uh, these are pictures from one of our students uh, from Armenia that she took of um, of her of her room and of Hostivas, and this is this is the view from her room, I believe. Um, so it actually looks quite homey. Um, here's the park; um, it's quite nice, uh, quite cozy. Um, I'm going to mention really quickly uh, the student life because obviously I'm not a student, and our students will be. Um, best, uh, the better ones to actually um, talk about this. As a Sergi, we plan events for our students. We um, have annual graduation ceremony, graduation gala, which is a really fancy uh, event that we have missed last year, unfortunately, but hopefully there will be one this autumn. We also have uh, beer parties, which is, um, you can actually see it here in the picture. It's, there is a band, some, uh, some nibbles and uh, beer and wine and uh, non-alcoholic um, beverages, of course. And uh, we invite alumni, professors, students, um, and basically all the programs and the staff and everyone gets together and that's quite nice. Um, a great, um, tradition of Sergi is to have a food party where the students, usually first year students, um, cook or prepare food from their countries and then they represent their countries. Um, you, can, you can see it here on the left. Uh, I believe, I think Flavio can, uh, because when Flavio was in the first year, he actually took part in it. Um, he made tiramisu, if I'm not mistaken, it was delicious. And it's really beautiful because again, all the students and all the staff and professors come together and they try foods from, from places they've never been before. And it's, it's really a, a nice thing that brings people together and lets you learn about the cultures and um, traditions and food of other, of, of other um, nations. 
Uh, there is a student club as well, uh, in, it's actually in the basement of the building and uh, students get together, they watch films, they play table tennis um, or they just complain about um, studies sometimes. Uh, we actually have a student band as well, I hope we still have it. Um, they play at gala or at um, other parties and they're actually quite good. Um, and uh, usually students, sometimes even with professors, go on hikes um, or they play, um, they play sports. Uh, we have, uh, or pre-COVID, we had a baseball team um, where there were also people from uh, another group, uh, another program that Sergii has, MA in Applied Economics. And uh, I believe uh, so some, some people are also playing basketball every week. The girls are doing yoga. So, there's a lot to to choose and the only thing you have to do is just um, ask people if they want to join you maybe and then um, uh, sometimes they they sent us pictures from trips to, to castles and trips where they where they explore the czech republic which is actually really nice uh, there are of course things that students organize and they don't, don't tell us about so um, I'm sure I'm sure uh, they can be quite quite nice as well but unfortunately we don't know about them uh, which is maybe sometimes better but uh, maybe maybe Evgenia or Flavio can t uh, tell you about those so I think yes so this is uh, this is where I would like to ask uh, Evgenia to Probably, I think you wanted to share your slides, so I'm going to stop sharing and I'll give the floor to you um, to talk about what you have prepared. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you enable me to share the screen? Yes. Uh, okay, I think, yeah, I think it should be yes. able. Yes, it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, hi guys, my name is Evgenia and I want uh, to say uh, some words about three things, financial support, um, also the dormitory and research assistantship experience. First one is about financial support, like uh, you may know that uh, the standard uh, financial support like Cyber is uh, 15,000 uh, Czech crowns per month. And uh, I think that it's useful to know that uh, CGI also have reimbursement for sport activities like uh, 600 uh, Czech crowns per month, but it's not actually in lockdown. <laughs> but typically you can, for example, um, do football or some other kinds of sport uh, receive uh, receipt for these activities and just um, uh, give it to the CGI and uh, you will receive reimbursement for these activities. Also, uh, um, you can um, receive multi-sport card. I usually uh, use uh, this card. It's like, is, uh, this is the card uh, with the, which you can go to many places in Prague which are accredited by this card. For example, uh, in gyms, in dance uh, activities and so on. Uh, but uh, this amount is not uh, reimbursed, uh, you just pay this uh, per month, but uh, it's uh, worth it. And also for me, uh, this is uh, really useful that uh, there is transfer uh, reimbursement for students uh, above 26 years old. Uh, so um, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, the price of uh, uh, the year uh, tra transport card is about uh, 3,500 Czech crowns and uh, 2,000 uh, Czech crowns you can receive back um, for the year. Uh, um, also, the second thing is about dormitory um, vice versa rental departments. Uh, so I had an experience uh, living in dormitory. Um, it's a Kuleha Stibash, as Veronica said, it's Frag 10. Mm, uh, you can check it on the map. And um, you can uh, go to university by bus and metro or by train. And approximately, I mean, from a dormitory to university, it takes about 30 minutes. 
uh, this is the picture, how it looks like, but um, I think that uh, bats are a bit smaller um, in reality, but more or less uh, this, this picture is uh, 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 reliable. <laughs> um, and this is the main entrance of uh, the building. It's um, here Ubudavana, and uh, this is actually Kolejo Sivaj. And uh, this is um, a picture from park. Uh, it's near uh, the dormitory. It's also called, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Park Hostevarj. Um, uh, here, a lot of people jogging, and um, during this winter, uh, they're also skiing, uh, and it was really funny. Um, and uh, the dormitory depends, actually, uh, like Veronica said, it uh, can be like 3,000 crowns per month, but it depends on the day, so it can be like 3,000 and 500 per month, I mean the dormitory. And typically two people per room, uh, there is one uh, day in uh, the year where you can actually reserve this room, the single room. Mm, but uh, if you will be like students, so we can share the secrets of uh, getting the single room. Uh, yeah, and um, um, now I actually rent a department and uh, you can uh, share it with the uh, other person, for example, your friends, your family members, and it depends. Yes, it really depends on the location. I live actually near um, the dormitory and I also have access to this park. Uh, it's really comfortable because you can, um, you can go to, for example, to the dormitory like a guest and you can jog, uh, you can do jogging with uh, other students from dormitory and uh, also you have uh, this rental uh, apartment. And uh, there are a lot of uh, links and sites for um, renting a flat in uh, uh, Czech Republic. So you can rent with um, some agents or you can use some site like uh, Bizrealitki uh, for uh, renting without any agents. But it's a bit risky because uh, people are different. That's why um, maybe the best way is uh, to communicate with some agents. Um, and the first thing that I wanted to mention is, um, uh, as you may know, in CGI, uh, you should uh, do assistantship um, from the second semester. And um, you can uh, do a uh, teaching assistantship, uh, research assistantship, or other uh, things. Um, I had uh, actually experience in uh, research assistantship and um, uh, during my first research assistantship for a professor, I actually have learned uh, how to use search server to work with big data, for example, on your own uh, laptop. Uh, sometimes if the data is really big, uh, you can't use your uh, laptop because uh, it, it will be, uh, I don't know, it, it can't uh, work this data. So uh, you can use this uh, server, it's uh, called Heavy Horses. <laughs> yes, funny, funny name. And um, with this server, you can actually work with this data like in uh, programming, uh, with programming um, in R, in uh, MATLAB and so on. And I, had, I want to mention another experience in research, research assistantship. Uh, during this one, I have learned how to scrap the data from web with external applications uh, with Python, or like uh, it's with the distribution with uh, Anaconda, uh, Jupyter, Pandas library. Uh, or you can uh, download it by uh, other external uh, applications. And it was really useful because I can uh, use it during my future research and uh, current research. Uh, if you have some questions, you can ask me or um, now or just ask me in the chat. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Evgenia. That was, that was really nice. And it's, it's always good to hear in, information from the students as well, because <clears throat> obviously we can't know everything and this, this, this is helpful. Um, so now I would like to ask Flavio to, uh, I think, uh, give, share his screen and, and uh, tell, us, tell us what he has prepared. Thank you. 
Uh, wait a moment, I'm going to share a screen. Indeed, just one. Can you see my desk, my very crowded desktop? Yes, indeed. So let me start a presentation. Okay, so uh, I think like, hello, uh, hello everyone. My name is Flavio. I am, uh, as Veronica mentioned, a third year student. Uh, so here I want to describe my journey, I would say, uh, that is still in progress as I am a third, third, third year. So I guess I will continue that for the next uh, three years. Uh, as I just started actually my, my period in, in research. Uh, but here I want to actually more focus on my, let's say from the operative point of view to the dorm, for example, uh, the finance, but also the student life. Uh, so um, I want to actually introduce my experience in the dorm with this fantastic picture, as you can see here of the hall, uh, which I think is one of the stuff that is impressing mostly the, the students as I can see all part of the picture are on the about the about the whole and with this this poem of uh, Kavafis about the importance of the journey so um, let me start with my story uh, before like Sergi I was working I worked for two years in a big multinational I was living in my apartment so um, this decision basically uh, was also a decision from uh, uh, a lifestyle point of view as uh, I have to move basically uh, in, in a dormitory and uh, I honestly I apart from one year at the university I never lived uh, in, a, in a student dorm so for me it was a quite a radical change and uh, some let's say an exit from my comfort zone so imagine myself I would say entering the first time actually summer not, not at Christmas as in the picture in this hall imagining all let's say the monster that I'm going to uh, challenge for the future and well I, what I could say is that uh, one of the monsters that they could see in the dorm is this uh, fluffy bunny that uh, in, in summer is, is running uh, around the dorm and in winter is actually sleeping uh, behind the bushes uh, uh, close by, close to, the, to, to my windows. Of course, what I want to say is that of course, I don't want to reduce my life in dorm as like to like a whole and to a fluffy bunny, but what I want to say is that, of course, the dorm and the stay as a PhD student is a more complex stuff. And uh, uh, of course, the choice is uh, uh, an operative choice that involves pros and cons. So from the dorm point of view, the pros, I would say, are the one that I can confirm the, what uh, Veronica said. So first of all, it's very cheap. Uh, it's uh, perfectly uh, proportional to your, to your salary. It's around 3,500 uh, check crown a bit more, I would say, uh, and it depends on the mouth. Uh, and yes, it's very well connected. As Eugenia said, uh, it's um, half an hour. You can choose to go by, by train or you can choose to go by tram. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter. Once you have like the monthly or the three months of subscription to the means of transportation, you can take whatever uh, means of transportation you want. And of course, another stuff that is very important is that there are several malls close by. Uh, I am personally very fan of Lidl because it's cheap and also because of the Italian week. Uh, and you have two, two Lidl close by. So just to say basically that uh, if you want to save money, it's very good actually to have uh, a, lot of, a wide choice of supermarket or malls. Uh, and yes, it's a nice area. Uh, there is a park close by. I didn't see honestly this swimming pool but uh, I will actually remediate that next uh, summer. And then uh, you have a reception that is open uh, 24 hour, 24 hour for the administrative staff is more open in the morning, but in case of any problem, you can always find someone there. Um, of course, cons, uh, the high aesthetic of the building, I would say is not the masterpiece uh, of the modern architecture, but on the other side is very functional. So it's, I mean, you, you don't require to go enough Le Corbusier building, but it's very nice. And uh, of course, the place is a bit isolated. It's very well connected, as I mentioned, but it's not immediately close to the city center. And of course, uh, uh, most important stuff is that the receptionists sometimes are rude. They don't speak full English. Uh, so, but what I can say is that, uh, first of all, the morning guy speak English, the one for the administrative things, uh, while the other one you learn very soon how to interact with them and which are the friendlier people 
which are the, the fr fr friendlier one. So in general, my, 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 exper in, in my experience is overall very positive, I would say. Uh, going to, to student life and financial management, this is actually one of the picture of activities that were, were taken outside of uh, SERGI, I would say, uh, even if all, all these people here are or were PhD students. Uh, and um, what I want to say is that uh, like uh, leisure and those students, let's say that your companions in your journey are very important. So, um, I mean, uh, sometimes you need, uh, you need to do network for your academic, from an academic point of view, but also for, for, for leisure because you need it. So uh, what Prague has to offer? Uh, have to offer? Uh, well, first of all, like from the food and drink point of view, Search AI is very central. So you can really find uh, um, several places to eat uh, for every kind of occasions. Uh, if you want to have a fast lunch or a fast dinner, if, because you need to study, it's fine. If you want to spend much, a bit more money, let's say because you have higher budget for that day, uh, because you, finished, you just finished the exam, you can always find the, a uh, cocktail bar close by, so this is not a huge deal. Of course, um, you have also a wide variety of food. If you like Vietnamese um, food, is very. there are several places. If you like Italian food and Italian cafeteria, you have the Italian cafeteria. If you like uh, local food, and actually local food, from my point of view, is very nice, uh, you can find actually very, very nice places close by. Um, and finally, useless to say, I would say the beer is uh, the beer is fantastic. Uh, I hope you actually, you, okay. Uh, the beer is very good. Uh, during summer, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can find gardens, uh, garden bar where you can, eat, drink, you can drink beer outside. And finally, uh, if you like craft beers, there are like places as well to, to, maybe you can spend a bit more, but the quality of beer is improving. Uh, from student life, I think I can confirm what Veronica said. Uh, gala as well is very nice, it's very fancy. Uh, food parties, yes, I participated two years ago. I did the tiramisu. Uh, but I think that from my point of view, as I'm a, an eater more than a chef, uh, I really enjoyed actually to try the, for example, Armenian, Georgian food, uh, Russian food, the Ukrainian food. And this is actually, on, from my point of view, is very awesome. And um, finally, the club. Uh, at the moment, I don't think it's available due to the, the COVID, but it's nice. You have table tennis. Personally, I'm always losing there, but it's nice because you can enjoy some time the, uh, the, to play there or the sofa. And of course, it's up to you. You can enjoy a beer after the exam, but this is due, to, I mean, it's, it's part of your personal life. So finally, what I can say is financial management there is very important. Uh, the, the baseline here is that the cheapest option is eating at the dorm. You can buy everything at the mall and so on and so forth. Uh, but in case you're lazy or in case you materially don't have time to do that, to do so, um, you can always find some place. There are like very hidden places uh, close by Sergi. If you, if you need any help or any suggestion, I'm sure that Veronica or me as well on by mail, we can suggest some, some, somewhere to eat. Um, and of course the canteens now, of course, due to COVID are closed, but the canteen is very cheap. Of course, the canteen is offering not a wide, um, wide amount of food, so you can always diversify, but the canteen is a cheap option, quite actually as cheap as eating at the, at the dorm and cooking by yourself. So in general, what I can say is that uh, uh, it's very easy to survive above all with the standard stipend. Um, and, um, but of course, uh, you need to prepare like maybe a, a, a monthly budget to maximize, let's say, your, uh, your opportunities and also your leisure opportunities when you have time, let's say. Uh, to conclude, uh, I think that uh, you, you need always like using, uh, quoting the, the poem to have in mind your, your, your purpose, you are a PhD student. So what you, you need to do is basically studying um, to achieve your, your dream, I would say. Uh, this of course is giving you strength, but also this is giving you uh, the opportunity not to lose yourself in the, the, the opportunities that Praga has to offer. And on the other side, having some companions in this travel, a network basically to win, that is going to help you to improve your academical performance. I can assure that from my point of view. 
uh, but also to give you more information actually Ex exchanging information is fundamental in uh, in as a phd student and on this point of view yes sharing restaurants sharing place to eat uh, is also good from your financial perspective so really find uh, a group of people where you can share information and again like what's matter is like to conclude is the experience at UN, apart from the piece of paper that is the PhD, uh, this experience for me it has been very valuable and still now is very valuable because it's giving you some knowledge and uh, the NCRGI and this program is giving you all the resources to, uh, to make your experience worthy on this point of view, both academically and also at the level of, let's say, student life. So if you have any question, of course, I will be available now or by mail. Thank you. Thank you so much, Flavia. That was uh, that was that was great, um, and a lot of information. I'm sure not just for um, the attendees of this uh, webinar, but also for us. Uh, we also uh, love to learn um, about uh, you know bunnies at the dormitory. Um, I've actually I've actually received a few of the pictures of the bunnies before, so I'm, I'm glad they're still there. I hope actually I I could. I mean, someone hear me because I had the the microphone. Ah, very good, actually. It okay. was it was good, and then at at some point it you got very very loud, but <laughs> it, it's fine because I just adjusted my my volume on the on the laptop. So okay, good to know. Good. Um, Sorry, actually. That's Sorry. why I was making weird faces because it was suddenly really loud. But I hope. No, no, no. It's my fault, actually. Like a microphone here is very important. It, that's good. That's good. Uh, we we heard you, right? Um. So I would now encourage everyone to start asking if you want to ask, um, actually not write it in the chat. Uh, if you want to ask, you can raise a hand and uh, you will be able to ask uh, me, Eva, Flavio or Evgenia, depending on, on what you want to ask, or you can post it in the chat. What I'm going to do now, um, I am going to share the screen one more time and I'm going to go through uh, really quickly our um, admissions um, slide just to remind everyone of, um, of everything that has to do with application. So the deadline is March 31st. It has not moved and it will not move. Um, the requirements for those who don't know if you uh, wish to study in the MA in economic research, you need to have uh, your bachelor degree finished by September of this year. Um, and if you want to do a PhD, so the Czech PhD and the American PhD together, then you will need to have a master's degree done by um, the end of September of this year. Um, the most important thing is to have very strong mathematical background that you could prove with your transcripts. Um, of course, if you are applying for PhD, yes, Eva, yes, yes. Yeah, it's just when you said that if you, let's say, I just wanted to make a really, I think, important comment. When you, let's say, think that you can, let's say, change at later point that you forgot to apply for the master's in economic research or just change it. Unfortunately, after the application gets closed, this is not possible, okay? So you have to make a wise choice at the very beginning. We do not allow to change this in the application after the deadline. So basically, you know that you, if you know that you will finish the master's degree, my strong recommendation is to apply only for the PhD. And then if you are only the bachelor's degree holder, apply for the, and you wanted to go for the PhD, apply for the US PhD track with the master's in economic research. So it's not possible. You apply, let's say, for only for the US PhD and then think that you could do that. No, you would have to wait for another year. Yes. Uh, thank you, Eva, for that point. Uh, it also brings me to something that some people um, sent me via email. They ask me if by applying to both MAER and the US PhD with them already having an MA, if it makes it easier to get into the program. It doesn't. Um, it, if, if anything, admissions committee is going to question why you need two masters why you're not going strict uh, directly to the PhD. So be very careful when you're applying. So if you're a bachelor graduate, 
MAER ideally if if unless there is a there is a reason why you need to go through the MA in economic research as as a person who already has an MA that's that was that was the point um Eva did you want to add something no 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 well just like a perfect valid point so because the expectations on let's say for the masters is let's say higher so you could basically if you have the PhD it's it's better, let's say, to start directly with the PhD than with just a master's degree. Yeah. Plus the curriculum is almost identical, so yeah. really not not that much point to to um, to, yeah. to be to be too choosy. Um, yes. So as I said, mathematical background, uh, English proficiency very very important. I will talk about English proficiency proof as well because that's something I get a lot of questions about. If you previously studied in um, studied economics, it's great. If you haven't, but you studied uh, programming, data science, physics, that's also great, and it's 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 a good background for for our studies as well. Um, when choosing to study PhD at SERGI, make sure you know what the research focus of our researchers is. So we're mostly micro and macro. There are a lot of micro theorists. Um, there are some people interested in experimental economics, but uh, there aren't really people interested uh, or who are researching agricultural economics. We don't really have a very solid base in environmental economics. Uh, we don't do management. Uh, so it, it's very important to also align your research interests in the research focus of the institution, right? So I would advise everyone to go through to go through our um, on the website to go through research interest of our teachers and researchers. It's, it's very good. Uh, right, quickly, uh, the documents that uh, applicants need to need to submit. Um, I see someone's raising a hand. That's very good. Uh, so uh, online application is needed to be filled out and sent. Um, statement of motivation, not longer than 4000 characters, not words. Um, up to date uh, CV, ideally two pages because if it gets more, it's a bit, you know, um, the admissions committee might not be so uh, keen on reading eight pages of CV. Proof of English proficiency, and this uh, is usually a TOEFL or a Cambridge exam or an IELTS exam, the academic uh, version. Um, and this goes for everyone um, unless they completed their degree in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, or the UK. So everyone else, um, even though they completed a degree uh, in English, but in a different country than those that I mentioned, or those that you can find on our website, they have to submit a valid proof of English proficiency. Uh, bear in mind that IELTS and TOEFL have expiration period of two years. So that's also uh, something to, um, to note. Then we will need uh, copies of uh, bachelor's and uh, master's diplomas and transcripts. Of course, it can happen. You don't have the diploma yet because you are graduating in June. That's okay. You just submit a confirmation from, official confirmation from the university that you are studying there and the expected finish of your studies and then get it sent to us. If you don't have complete transcript, just send us the transcript, the grades that you have gotten by the date that you're submitting. Last but not least, we need contact for two to three, ideally academic ref uh, referees. This shouldn't really be uh, your employers, ideally someone who knows your mathematical skills, someone who knows your academic English skills. Um, so, so think about that when choosing referees because they will need to write something about you and your skills and you really want them to, um, to have something, um, something to write. Uh, the admission decision will be sent out in the first half of April and then uh, students or applicants will be either directly admitted to start studies at the beginning of October or they will be invited to preparatory semester preparatory courses that will run uh, throughout April and June, April, May and June. So those are two possibilities. At the end of prep, there are exams. Uh, when you pass the exams, then 
your file, your application and results in prep go to the admissions committee again. And then they decide if you are um, going to start studies at the beginning of October.